Hello, my name's Bryn and I'm from the Little Angel Theatre and today I would like to read you A Little Bit of Nonsense by Edward Lear which has got some very silly stories in it and I'm going to read some of them to you. The first one is a very silly tale about a table and a chair and there are pictures. The first one is this one, the table and the chair. Okay. I said the table to the chair. You can hardly be aware how I suffer from the heat and from chilblains on my feet. If we took a little walk, we might have a little talk. Pray, let us take the air, said the table to the chair. Said the chair unto the table, now you know that we are not able. How foolishly you talk, when you know we cannot walk said the table with a sigh. It can do no harm to try. I've got as many legs as you. Why can't we walk on two? So they both went slowly down and walked about the town with a cheerful bumpy sound as they toddled round and round. And everybody cried as they hastened to their side. See, the table and the chair have come out to take the air. But in going down an alley to a castle in the valley, they completely lost their way and wandered all the day until they paid a ducky quack and a beetle and a mouse who took them back to their house. And there's a picture of the animals taking the chairs, walking on two legs. Then they whispered to each other, Oh, delightful little brother, what a lovely walk we've taken. Let us dine on beans and bacon. So the ducky and the leetle, brownie mouse and beetle, dined and danced upon their heads till they toddled to their beds. And there's a picture of all of them dancing on their heads. Now the next one I would like to read to you is a tale called The Courtship of the Yongi Bongi Bo. On the coast of the Coromandel, where the early pumpkins blow, in the middle of the woods lived the Yongi Bongi Bo. Two chairs and half a candle and one jug without a handle, were all his worldly goods in the middle of the woods. These were all the worldly goods of the Yongi Bongi Bo, of the Yongi Bongi Bo. Once among the bong trees walking, where the early pumpkins blow, to a little heap of stones came the Yongi Bongi Bo, where he heard a lady talking. To some milk white hens of Dorking. <laughs> Tis the lady Jingly Jones on that little heap of stones. On that little heap of stones sits the lady Jingly Jones, said the Yongi Bongi Bo. Said the Yongi Bongi Bo. And here she is, sitting on the stones with her hens all around her. Lady Jingly, Lady Jingly. Sitting where the pumpkins blows. Will you come and be my wife? Said the Yongi Bongi Bo. Said the Yongi Bongi Bo. I am tired of living singly. On this coast so wild and shingly. I am weary of my life. If you'll come and be my wife. Quite serene would be my life. Said the Yongi Bongi Bo. Said the Yongi Bongi Bo. Come on this coast of Coromandel, shrimps and watercresses grow. Prawns are plentiful and cheap, said the Yongi Bongi Bo, said the Yongi Bongi Bo. You shall have my chairs and candle, and my jug without a handle. Gaze upon the rolling deep, fish are plentiful and cheap. As the sea, my love, is deep, said the Yongi Bongi Bo, said the Yongi Bongi Bo. Lady Jingly answered sadly, and her tears began to flow. Your proposal comes too late, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo. 
I would be your wife most gladly. And here she twirled her fingers madly. But in England, I've a mate. Yes, you've asked me far too late, for in England, I've a mate. Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo. Mr. Jones, his name is Handel, Handel Jones Esquire and Co. Dorking fowls, delights to send, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo. Keep, oh, keep your chairs and candle, and your jug without a handle. I can merely be your friend. Should Mr. Jones more dorking send, I will give you three, my friend. Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo. Though you've such a tiny body, and your head so large doth grow, though your hat may blow away, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo, though you're such a hoddy doddy, I wish that I could modify the words that I must say. Will you please go away? That is all I have to say, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo, Mr. Yongi Bongi Bo. Down the slippery slopes of myrtle, where the early pumpkins blow, to the calm and silent sea, fled the Yongi Bongi Bo. There beyond the Bay of Girtle lay a large and lively turtle. You're the cove, he said for me. On your back beyond the sea, turtle, you shall carry me, said the Yongi Bongi Bo, said the Yongi Bongi Bo. And here he is, riding on the back of the turtle. Through the silent, roaring ocean did the turtle swiftly go. Holding fast upon his shell rode the Yongi Bongi Bo, with a sad, primeval notion, towards the sunset isles of Boshan. Still the turtle bore him well, holding fast upon his shell, Farewell, Jingly Jones, farewell, sang the Yongi Bongi Bo, sang the Yongi Bongi Bo. From the coast of Coromandel did that lady never go. On that heap of stones she mourns for the Yongi Bongi Bo. On the coast of Coromandel, in his jug without a handle, still she weeps and daily moans. On that little heap of stones, to her dorking hens she moans, for the Yongi Bongi Bo, for the Yongi Bongi Bo. And there's one more story I'd like to read for you, which is a lovely little story uh, called The Duck and the Kangaroo, and there are pictures on every page. So I'll start. Said to the duck, to the kangaroo, good gracious, how you hop. Over fields and water too, as if you would never stop. My life is a bore in this nasty pond, and I long to go out into the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo, and here they are having a little conversation. Please give me a ride on your back, said the duck to the kangaroo. I would sit still and would say nothing but quack, the whole of the long day through. And we'd go to the Dee, and we'd go to the Jelly Bow Lee, over land and over sea. Please take me a ride, oh do, said the duck to the kangaroo. And there they are having a talk again. Said the kangaroo to the duck, this requires some little reflection. Perhaps on the whole, it might bring me luck. But there seems but one objection, which is, if you'll let me speak so bold, your feet are unpleasantly wet and cold. That would probably give me some sort of rheumatism, said the kangaroo. There they are, having a chat again. And there's the duck on his tail. Said to the duck, as I sate on the rocks, I have thought over that completely. I have bought four pairs of woollen socks, which fit my webbed feet neatly. 
and to keep out the cold I've bought a cloak and to keep you amused every day I will tell you a joke all to follow my own dear true love of a kangaroo said the kangaroo I'm ready all in the moonlight pale but to balance me well dear duck sit steady and quite at the end of my tail so away they went with a hop and a bound and they hopped around the world three times around and who so happy oh who as the duck and the kangaroo and here there's a picture of the duck happily sat on the end of the kangaroo's tail and that was a few stories from a little bit of nonsense by Edward Lear. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.